Opa! Welcome everybody to Stavi's World. We have the legend Lewis Black on in just a couple moments. But before we get to Lewis, I just want to let you know, number one, the last leg of the Fat Rascal Tour is kicking off right now, right around the corner. Get your tickets. A couple tickets left. We're kicking off in Ohio, then down to Baltimore. I'm going all over the place. Ending up in New York, going to be in St. Louis, Milwaukee, Florida. Go to stavi.biz, get your tickets right now. I also want to let you know about the smoothest way for you to enjoy cannabis products. That's right, our friends at Freeze Pipe. You might remember them. Shop the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more at thefreezepipe.com and use code STAVI for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com. Don't go to freezepipe.com and code STAVI for 10% off the Freeze Pipe. Order today and start fighting fire with ice. Also, you know about my goal to learn enough enough Spanish to bag a thick Latina. Well, that wouldn't be possible without our friends at Babbel. Get started right now with 55% off your Babbel subscription. For our listeners, go to babbel.com, B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash Stavi. That's 55% off at babbel.com slash Stavi, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash Stavi. Rules and restrictions may apply you're thinking, oh, I'm sure this episode is starting now, right? No, Eldis is getting married. We need the sponsorship money. Factor, <laughs> Factor Meals, baby. That's right. It's a three for this time, folks. Factor Meals, delicious meals, prepackaged meals. Uh, it's. I've tried a lot of these. These are incredible. They, they come fully made for you. All you have to do is heat them up. Go to factormeals.com slash stavi50 and use code stavi50 to get 50% off. That's right. That's code stavi50 at factormeals.com slash stavi to get 50% off. I've had them. They're delicious. You're going to love them. And without further ado, let's get to Lewis Black, huh? Can you believe it? Play us in, LD. Opa! Welcome, everybody, to Stavi's World 904-800-STAV. Call in. We'll solve all your problems. Uh, I'm pumped. I'm so happy to have in the studio, in beautiful Astoria, Queens, as you can tell, <laughs> the legend, Lewis Black. Lewis, thank you so much for coming. It's man. my I pleasure. It. Yeah. yeah. My pleasure. And that'll show you just how little of life I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought he'd be busier, but we got him. <laughs> yeah, really? really? <laughs> he'll, One day, he'll do no it? problem. Yeah. <laughs> can we do something tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lewis will be here for the whole next month, folks. Yeah, He's really. doing every episode. He's the new co-host. Uh <laughs> We're so, yeah, thank you so much for coming. We met on the Fully Loaded Tour. Yes. That was so much fun. It and, was. Uh, and we've got a fellow a fellow son of Maryland. Yeah. You know, and somebody who, you know, I'll suck you off up top, <laughs> and then we can just do the podcast, <laughs> yeah. but I've been a fan of for years. I mean, okay. literally, I was a little, I was like a nerd. Like, I was right in the politics and comedy, mm-hmm. like, nerd zone in, like, end of high school into, like, college before I was, like, I don't want to learn. I was done learning yeah. by about, like, I know a lot about the first Obama election, yeah, yeah. and that's when all my political knowledge kind of drops off. I was yeah. like, I'm done. I'm doing dick jokes for the rest of my yeah. life. No, I get it. I'm going to be, but, but there was, there was a, just a moment where I was just so, that was, I was really in the pocket. I was, you know, hugely, a, and still, I mean, still a huge fan. So this is so, this is huge for me, well, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, well, yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. No, it's, uh, no, it's, it's awesome to have you here. And, uh, yeah. We won't be talking politics because I am dumb now. That's uh, fine. I don't, yeah. I don't miss when we don't have to talk about yeah, it. I don't, yeah, 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 I don't miss yeah. it. And it's also, uh, it's kind of like the joke that I do on stage. It's, uh, you know, oh, it's so great to be a, to, you know, be a comic now. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, but you got to make it funny. Well, yeah. fuck you. It's not funny. <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. it's not funny anymore. Totally. No, absolutely. You go through the same shit over and over and you come up with, it's this, and what's, it's the same thing with a dick joke. It's like, yeah. how do I make a different dick right, joke? Right, right, right. How do I make a different joke about this asshole? Yeah, yeah, you basically, yeah, 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 yeah. What's the, I mean, it was kind of like, when are you going to stop doing comedy? When I can't come up with a better joke about what's the difference between a Democrat and a Republican. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I just feel like I'm stuck because I, I just have no skills. Oh, you know, yeah. it's like, it's like you, you start doing, you start... You're 19, and you're like, ah, I don't want to get a job. I want to go to a fish restaurant and do five <laughs> minutes of stand-up comedy in uh, College Park, Maryland. Uh, and then, Where? Uh, Where was that? Dude, this was um, 
It was the wow. Clarion, the Clarion Inn Jesus. attached to. <laughs> wow. It was attached to the Clarion Inn. It was at the time called EJ's Landing. <laughs> It was wow. a nautical theme. I believe now it is an Indian restaurant. It's been bought out by an Indian family. Uh, but that was the first place I did comedy. No was a, was a, a very shitty seafood restaurant yeah. on Route 1 in College I Park. Know, I <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I went to Maryland for a year. Oh, Elders, too. We got two Terps in the building. Go yeah. Terps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a good year. I was out of there. Yeah. Fucked you out. were gone. <laughs> I was gone. Well, because I was, I was, I was at the school for... Uh, I was... Maybe, f which was four or five miles from my home. And oh, it was, yeah, yeah. I'm not doing this. Yeah. I am not fucking <laughs> living near, I'm not, and I'm living at home. This is oh, not what the brutal. deal's supposed <laughs> yeah, to be. So, so you're just commuting. You grew because you grew up in Silver Spring, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. You know, we we know all about it. Yeah, it's uh, un unbelievable. You say College Park. It's so, so funny because it's everybody, you know, all of anyone who lives in any community, you got, oh, they're all the triggers. Of know? course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that you found... You were living in Baltimore and found a place in College Park, a fish restaurant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he literally it was because I was shamefully hiding from my immigrant family that I was doing comedy. Exactly. So, I, yeah, they didn't want any. When I, I mean, I was like, I'm first born. You know, my family moved over here in the '80s, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, s six years after they lived moved, I was born, and they just kind of stuck around. And the idea for staying in America was like, all right, well. At least my the way my father looked at it was like, all right, well, these mo these motherfuckers owe me their lives. So you're I was I always tested well. I read uh, this is the kind of show I read uh, the first part of your book. You know, <laughs> you know. So, so we're gonna do a lot of questions about your childhood. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, you know, this is we do some research, but not a lot of it. I get that uh, too. Yeah. No, I, fully, I don't. I can't believe people do research. Yeah. I, I can't believe people do no research. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just where, a little to get they, us going. Where, the Wicca, where they read the. You know, at least you read a paragraph. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you've been to it, where they just go to the Wikipedia. Oh, and page. they just read, and you know the paragraph. Yeah. You've read it yourself. Yeah. You're you're hearing the exact place the commas are. Yeah. You're you're hearing them pause exactly as it's written. Yeah. But I was the kind of kid that you were, where it was like you learned about you learned how to get good grades. Yeah. You just kind of understood the system, and you were like, you know, you knew how to like. So I tested really. I grew up in the age of standardized tests. So I, for whatever reason, was great at those tests. Right. And I think it gave my family a false sense of, <laughs> oh, he's a genius. He's going to bail me out. My father was like, he's going to bail me out of all the debt I'm in. I was always supposed to be a lawyer or something like that. And so I didn't want them to know I was doing stand-up. So our winter break, I went, I lived on Eldis's couch in College Park. Wow. And I looked up all the open mics in the area. Uh, the first time I was ever on stage was an open mic where they did a joke contest at the end of the thing, uh, like for the audience. And I was gonna go to the open mic next week, but I went to check it out and I like, this is what a dickhead I was. I like punched up some other guy's joke and won a, and won, and won a bottle of Campari when I was 19. And then me and Eldis went and had a, remember what we had? We had like chicken cutlet sandwiches. We had like frozen chicken patty sandwiches. The kind they serve, oh, we got man. them from like Giant. At, you oh, know, they, they, they come they come in like 48 packs. Yeah. And we had chicken cutlet sandwiches and Campari and sodas to celebrate the first. And it was a $20 cash prize. And I think we also bought like a chocolate chocolate cake <laughs> and me and Eldis had Campari and sodas, right. chicken cutlet with ch American cheese and, and white bread oh. and Campari and sodas and chocolate cake to celebrate. Wow. Um, and you said, boy, this is what I want. And I was like, this is the life, baby. <laughs> Eating dog sh You know what's so funny? That literally would become our, Eldis is now my tour manager. Our lives literally are eating dog shit at midnight, getting fucked up and getting no pussy whatsoever half the time. <laughs> so that was, I had a taste of the good life. I was like, wow. I made twenty dollars. I'm getting illegal booze, and then uh, and then for the whole month, I went to I stayed in Eldis's and I just did, you know, a bunch of open mics and just tried to you know figure. And then eventually, I would quit because of all the immigrant guilt of like my parent. Like I quit after a year, and I tried really hard to be a, you know, just a, a good student and yeah. a good. You know, and I just. Yeah, I tried for two years, and then it was fucking killing me. And I was like, I can't do this. shit. You didn't go to college. You college? Or? I did go to college. I was I was at UMBC actually, uh -huh. and then and I I dropped out. At I had I only needed two language credits, 
and they let me walk across the stage. They were like, you'll get these in the summer, right? And I was like, yeah, for sure. But all I wanted was my mom to see me with the cap and gown. <laughs> so I had, I had a three, I had a, I graduated, mag, I walked magna cum laude. Great. And I had the cap, and I do not have a degree. Because I never went back and got my language credits. Right. They, yeah, the they never gave me the Greek. degree. Even though I know, I also know Greek, by the way. So I could have tested out of it. And I, I, I Googled like, hey, what do I, what do I do here to get it? And they were like, Ah, uh, this looks annoying. I have to come to New York. I didn't live in New York at the time. I have to take a bus. I have to pass a <laughs> test. I don't need a degree. This comedy thing. Somehow the hubris of youth turned out yeah. correct. Because I was like, fuck a degree. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be on SNL in a fucking year. You know what I mean? That's what I thought when I'm 20 years old. But uh, yeah, I don't. I, that was that was kind of the. You know, I was just, and I just, so I just ended up doing this because it's like, what the fuck else am I going to do? But, yeah. you know, and so you went to College Park, you were only there for a year. You didn't spend the beautiful four years we did no. over there, but no, you were I, out because you, I, your I, mom I, was hovering. What was going on? My, just the family I was living was with my, no, I was just living with my parents. It's yeah. like, this is, yeah. and my, I, and, and I'm going to, and I'm there with guys I love, three guys I went to high school with, uh-huh. and, uh, I said, but, but we're, it's the, this is not the deal. Yeah. I'm supposed to be, and I'd done really well in school. I uh-huh. mean, stupid well, like to the point where um, I graduated, uh, you know, very, I mean, I was the top male in, the cl- in a huge class. Love that. And they Love said. Love that they still broke it down by gender. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, yes. yeah, I was I like was, top male, meaning the smartest one. Yeah, well, was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. well because I couldn't And do, the top like, female went to uh, secretary school. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. You, got to go, you got to go to college. Yeah, and they, she got free typing lessons. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, they all, <clears throat> the two who were ahead of me went on to, to really good schools. I go in to meet a guidance counselor. My guidance counselor says, you can go here, 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 list these places. They're all, you know, the top of the, you know, the top. I was was supposed to get into uh, Brown. Brown was going to be no problem to get into Brown. It was Mm going to be no problem to get into Amherst or Williams or these places that, uh, in retrospect, they go, fuck. Yeah. Uh, But at the time, it was like, you know, it was out. It was get out of here. Yeah, 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 of course. uh, And, um... And they, this guy had given me all wrong advice. You know, I just got fucked. <laughs> yeah, you had a, you're just a dog shit guidance counselor. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I might as well. I could have I called you. And you, yeah, were, yeah. You, were, you were probably three and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'd gotten the same advice. It's fucking unbelievable. So I get, uh, and, uh, and I kind of got uh, completely, fu- I got, I applied to six schools. I got rejected by five oh, wow. of them. <laughs> the only one that accepted me was Georgetown. Oh, okay. But still uh, still close. Still, but the only one that accepted you was, was yeah, still in too close. Yeah. And, uh, and it had, and I, at that point I knew I wanted to do try theater. That's okay. why, that was, that was my direction. I bounced off the theater wall and ended up in, in stand up. Okay. It, but that was where I was headed. And why theater? Did you do a lot of theater like growing up? I mean, you you, you watched a bunch of theater. You 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 know, was that what was the, the, was the hook was so much? The, the, but my, I, went, I would go to see these plays with my parents down at the uh, there was a Schubert Theater okay down there and uh, and that was where these plays would come through on their way to New York and I got I, it just fascinated me that yeah. this group of people could come on stage and create this reality, which is what we do yeah, in yeah, a sense. Yeah. But create this reality for people, and I've, I've just found it amazing. Yeah. And uh, so there was something about it that was much more interesting to me than the math. I didn't. What the fuck is this for? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Who wants to add? You know, I mean, fuck really, this. Well, I was. Uh, is there no? You know, if they had even made a vague attempt to say, because for years I'm going, you're going to teach math and you're not going to teach it in terms of how to do an income tax form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking idiot. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to get kids hooked. Yeah. That's a way to kind of do, and that they could help their parents. You know, I mean, it's like, they keep that like, oh, we have math, but we have a secret thing that you could use for the math, but we're not going to show you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, a useful thing. So, you know, it was like, and all of the interesting stuff which you read about by the time which you stumble on when you're like in your 30s and somebody you're on a, a, an airplane flight and the guy is a physicist and talks to you about math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And goes, holy fuck. You go, fuck that? Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. that a secret. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So all of that stuff, 
I just, I, I, like I said, like we were talking earlier, you know, we knew how to do it. We knew how to game, game the system. Of course, yeah, yeah. And uh, so this was something that I couldn't, I, I couldn't game. I was not, um, uh, mm. I couldn't act. I couldn't, I, I wasn't writing. I, I just found it like, but I knew. But you loved it. I loved it and I knew I could write about it. And I thought writing about theater was, since I wasn't, like I was, I played a lot of ball. I played a lot of baseball, all that stuff. You know, I, I thought it's like being a sports writer, but you're writing about something you know that's uh, intellectual, right, and, right, right. And, and and is. But in a sense, is it, it has its own quality of being a, a sport. Sure, you, you know. And uh, so I thought I could write. You know, I could write about it, and uh, and so I kind of I got hooked on that. And I also did my last year at school, high school. I had these friends, all my friends probably like yours were funny. Right, right, so right. We had a good, yeah. I had funny We had friends. a bunch of funny losers, me and Eldis. <laughs> yeah. Me, Eldis, are another buddy of ours. We spent a lot of our time, you know, smoking the worst weed of possible. <laughs> uh, we literally would drive to, like, Philly for cheesesteaks from Baltimore. Like, we, you know, again, not a theme that ran through my adolescence. No pussy whatsoever. Yeah. So it's just you and the boys cra having a good time yeah. listening to, you know, the mixtape, Little Wayne mixtapes and getting stoned and, wow. you know, embarrassing ourselves at parties. I'm getting so fucked up. I'm taking my shirt off, <laughs> bouncing on trampolines, <laughs> hoping that'll get me attention from women. And they're all horrified, obviously. You know, so, but we were, but we had, but we were, we could all riff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had, yeah. we had that. Yeah. We all had, there was about seven of us and yeah. everyone was. That's awesome. And they were, all, and a bunch of them were funnier, you know. In yeah. retrospect, really much funnier than than I am. And uh, uh, but so we did a we did a they do a, you do a talent show every year. We did this thing, mm -hmm. you know, and they bring you know people do there, and it's always this same shitty kind of theme. Two two uh, two old ladies in an attic going through stuff. And it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's horrifying, and then they bring on an act based on a photo or yeah, yeah, yeah. some shit. Yeah. And they handed it in yet again, and we had two days to fucking, we grabbed it. I said, we're not doing this shit. We all went, we can't do this Yeah, yeah this is embarrassing. So we, the three of us sat down, and in, uh, and it was, and I can still, I can't remember, you know, you kind of go memories in your life, but I can remember clearly where we were. We sat there, we fucking rewrote the shit out of it. Yeah, I yeah. played uh, uh, theatrical, I played an agent, and they were trying to get on a TV show. <laughs> oh, wow, a me meta-commentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Meta-commentary on the state of show business yeah. was your high school play. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was, it was exactly what it was. So there was me, and we wrote parts in for my friends. Yeah. And they were all very funny. Yeah. And everything in between was going to be funny. So these people would come in, and they'd audition. And nine times, the people are going wild, da, da, da. and I'd go, you know what, why would you even do that in public? Yeah, right. So right, I was just, right. this was just appalling. Yeah. That's the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was kind of nice, but who's got time? Yeah, You're not yeah, getting yeah, on the show. And yeah. I think the, the one that won was something we made up, which was shitty. Yeah. Uh, somebody, <laughs> yeah. one of our guys doing something awful, and I yeah. gave him the prize, but it really... <coughs> But the, the the hook was way deep in your, as you well know, deep in your brain, which is huge laughs. I was yeah, playing yeah, in front yeah. of a thousand people. That's crazy, yeah. Which was crazy at that time. But I wasn't playing me, but I was, and, uh, and that was really part of the, you know, what what I was hooked in that sense of also theater. I mean, I can, I'm playing a, kind of a character like me. I went, oh, okay, this, yeah. is, this is really good. I'm going to pursue this. And also I liked... And I always liked uh, getting up. I liked being getting up in front of our class, which was huge. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I was in charge of a bunch of things, and they would ask questions, and I'd tear them apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels Why nice. Why would you even ask that <laughs> yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you set up the infrastructure where you could shit on people. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah, I yeah, could yeah, be yeah. sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And use my strongest suit. Right, right, and, right, right. And so that was the... That was really uh, the the drive behind theater. And, yeah, and then I I, I transferred out of uh, out of College Park. Too close, just too, too close. close to yeah, it's the sixties. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's a, it's too. You can't have that much of a good time in your childhood bedroom. Oh no, <laughs> you can't. You know? Yeah, and then, you know. Yeah, and I mean the high point of my uh, of my of my life at that point was, yeah. uh, you know, there was. 
was going, there was a, a group of, there was five women mm -hmm. uh, in playing in some bar in College Park yeah. or, or down near D.C. Sure. And it was, they're called the Great Dames. The Great and Dames. And we would literally go and watch them do three sets of music. <laughs> they were beautiful. And that was my sex life. You were a groupie yeah. for a local, a local, a local band. band. <laughs> but they were hoping. all stunning. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever approach any of the Great Dames? No! <laughs> I just was hoping they wouldn't notice that we were coming back every week. What Good. is the matter with these guys? Trying to catch a hard nipple through a shirt. That, that, that could sustain you for weeks on end. If, if it's a little chilly at the bar that the Great Dames are at. So all of my early, so it's good, good, all of my yeah. early stuff. Yeah, you know that I did kind of when I was starting to do stand up, kind of on the side just for fun, was all yeah. about my sex life. That yeah, yeah, classic. The, the nipple on the shirt thing. It I mean, it all starts out. with. There's no. That's the other thing. It's like you know, I'm like I talk about how. Oh yeah, I just you're 19 and you wanna. I'm just doing open mics, but if it's if we really distill it, it's for attention from women. Yeah, like when I, I'm no one. That's the only time being funny in a social setting was what kind of set me apart. It's the only time girls had any interest in me. I was too nervous, you know, to make anything happen. But I was like, why don't we just distill this? And then hopefully, and it worked. I mean, that was the only way I got laid yeah. when I was young, was like post, you know, around shows, whatever. Yeah. And then eventually I got enough confidence from it. But yeah, absolutely. That's that's how it starts. Every I do have the like, the older I get, the more I have just the caveman's view of like, when it comes down to it. Everyone is doing whatever it is to get laid, yeah. <laughs> like it, on some level, yeah. and you know there's obviously satisfaction from your work, and there's some other thing, but it's it's really at least at the beginning that's how it starts. Yeah, and then it becomes everybody does something so they can have a nap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Naps are great. I am transitioning slowly to the nap zone. <laughs> well, kind of, I mean, I don't know how you feel, but I mean, I, you find you know, you kind of, you do the show, you stay up. Oh, you, yeah, you're yeah. up till three, four in the morning, and you, even and even if you go, I'm going to go to sleep. You can't go. To he sleep. can't you know, go to sleep. Going, da, 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 da. And and then so the next day, it, it's always been a part of me. I mean, the, 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 even when I was younger, you know, that you do the gig, you stay up too late, wake up. Go through part of the day and then have to knock out. Gotta the have the nap. Yeah. That's yeah. Gotta have that. Four o'clock. I I'm, uh, I'm in, yeah, four yeah, yeah 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 I'm in there. Yeah. snoozing. Eldest eldest can go set up the cameras. I have work to I have work to do. <laughs> yeah. I love showing up. I love cutting it closer and closer. Where it's like you know now I'm like oh. The feature just got on? All right, I'll be. Give me <laughs> how much time does he have left? You yeah. know, it's like, I really, when I'm, when I, yeah, I've had some, we had some atrocious tours where I was just getting, you know, and also, I don't know, I don't know, I was getting way too fucked up and just the, the hangover's crazy. Yeah. You know, like, I physically can't get out of this bed until yeah. 6.15, <laughs> you know, yeah. to shower, hit a cold shower. But, you know, we're doing better, folks. We're trying to survive. We're trying to live and see a couple more tours. Well, you, and, you'll, and you end up doing it. Uh, I can, uh, being, a, yeah. being someone who's been through <laughs> yeah, the radio, yeah, yeah, yeah. you kind of go, because part of it says, I don't want to do this. You know, you, you, you still keep the drinking. Of course. But you yeah, kind of yeah. figure out where to put it. And, right, right, you know, right. Oh, oh, geez. I can, I'll drink till two. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> That'll yeah. be an improvement, and yeah. you, you, you know, and and the and you all and you, you, but you will still come back to the problem. And this is, I, I think, universal where you go, you're drinking, and you go, "Fuck, it's twelve. Yeah, yeah. Son yeah. of a bitch, I'm going to be in bed by one thirty. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, then yeah. at five, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, it's yeah. two. You have to uh, hit it just right. The yeah. first time you check your watch. You have to be a little alarmed. Yeah. You have to be like, fuck, I'm behind schedule. Yeah. You can't be ahead of schedule unless you're getting fucked up till four. Yeah. I know all about it. Yeah. And I do know that it's just a, uh, uh, the, the, the big, the thing that always amazed me with, with stand up, when, especially when I got, left theater and really was, became a, just did the con. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, was that, um, I couldn't understand how comics, you know, unless you, I, until I really began to understand that the, you know, alcoholism is a problem. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, know. yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they have these things. But how, if you were doing this for a living, what better place for someone to drink? Oh, it's, uh, it was just because you know I went. So let me figure this out so I could drink till 
five, <laughs> I still have yeah. 12 hours of sleep. Yeah, dude. You know, I mean, you almost have to fucking fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, and we do. Plenty of us do. That's the thing. It's like, it's the perfect camouflage for any number of drugs, sex addiction, food addiction, addiction. everything. And it's like, you know, I the only one I don't struggle with is actually drinking. All the other ones, those, yeah, 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 I can, I'll have a drink or two, but man, will I, yeah, just, just staying up to, because it is that thing of like, that's exactly what you get in, into comedy for, for me, and it's like, I'm trying to grow up and be like, all right, it's done. You had plenty of years where you're getting fucked up, you're, you know, it's like, you're not an insecure 16-year-old, you know, watching Comedy Central half hour presents yeah. Yeah. anymore, yeah. you're the guy at the show. Yeah. Stop. You have nothing to prove. Stop getting fucked up. Stop trying to get pussy every fucking night. Just get, have, go watch go watch Netflix with your pal Eldis. <laughs> go 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 eat a sa- go eat a Greek yogurt. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be a, a thing of wings and a whole pizza. <laughs> Don't stop taking dick pills and just just chill out, man. That's what that's, you know, I have to I have to like those are my affirmations yeah. that I have to say to myself on the road, but you know, that I'm fascinated by the fact that you wanted to be a playwright, though. That's so, I can't even imagine, like, you know, I mean, I guess it's a little bit of not, stand-up is is kind of, like, out there, but it's not really, I wonder if you would, like, you know, obviously you looked up to comics and stuff like that, but I also feel like plays had such a bigger part in the culture at the time that they don't really do anymore, but I just, I can't, it's such a different, it's such a different ec- artistic exercise from, the immediate feedback of just you on stage that yeah. you're fucking sitting somewhere typing out something that you you won't even get to say. Some other asshole gets to yeah. say. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah. and, and I can't and I, I have to imagine it was there was a lot of competition for it and it's just like such a different such a different skill set to what you ended up excelling yeah. at. So what's that what were those years where you're just like I just imagine with a, you with a scarf and a typewriter. You I know. never wore this. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's never. I just think it's playwright, I really, think. Really, I wandered around with an ascot and a fucking yeah. pipe. No. A completely different guy. You're no. slicking your hair back. Smoking yeah. jacket. Yeah, yeah, smoking jacket. Long cigarette. <laughs> you in a cafe. Yeah, no, I just... Um, I got a kick out of doing it. It was kind of, and, and then it, once, once you kind of start doing it, you realize, I mean, you got to realize I was, you're working with these people who are really good at what they do. They yeah, can yeah, fucking, yeah. so you kind of go, so it pushes you in terms of your writing, go, oh, I could write about this because that person can do that and da, 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 da. And, uh, and I, uh, and I, and, and nobody, um, I was at Chapel Hill. I was, I discovered along the way, I went to the University of North Carolina, one of the reasons I went there was is that there weren't a lot of places you could really get playwriting mm. where you could take it in, in, on the college <clears throat> level, yeah. the university level. And uh, so there were places that kind of taught it, but it was not, and there was no kind of teacher there that was, you know, who really you- was doing this. At Chapel Hill, I discovered in the uh, catalog, I was looking through it, that you could actually... Um, uh, get a get a get a drama major with it, uh, and it would be an emphasis. Would you be in playwriting? Oh, interesting. So it was all. So I could do a lot more writing. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, fuck, this is great because yeah. now now I've cut out six credits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, and I can just write. Well, you got that. Then you there are nine credits that you know, and some of those are in theater, and uh, and you've got a pretty two years where you can really write away, and nobody else was doing it. Yeah, there yeah, was yeah. nobody. Interesting. They so, were graduate students. Oh, but you were the only undergrad. Only undergrad by far, and they didn't know. I was going, so here's what I'm going to do, and they said, well, you can't do that. <laughs> the book, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. when I realized, you know, being smart did have certain payoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I opened the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sent me, <laughs> yeah. you fucking idiots, <laughs> and I read it. Yeah. And so I did that, and, it, uh, and then... Uh, and then immediate, and, and the big hook was, uh, I, I, um, I wasn't getting. This is um, so. I, I have you tried to write anything yet? Have you been? Yeah, a couple screen. I mean, screenplays, not really, not really, uh, uh, you know, for the stage. But yeah, screenplays. Well, screenplay. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, like uh, you had a, well, you know, you got a fucking brain. Yeah. You know, you skip theater. You might as well be writing. Oh, good. I'm gonna be. Uh, 
I'm going to declare a vow of poverty. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to be a playwright, especially when, no, I, it is, yeah. when I was doing it. And, uh, and I didn't really want to write the other stuff. Mm. I had no desire to... I, I went to a lot of movies, and I liked the idea of taking uh, the s- structures in film and using it. But what was, what's amazing is, is I took, I took uh, the courses at Chapel Hill. I took... Eventually, when I went to drama school... Uh, you know, I took the courses yeah. there in playwriting. They never taught anything about plot. Oh, wow. They never taught <clears throat> anything about story. Huh. Well, you fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's you think like, it's important? That's like saying, we're going to teach you math without numbers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're being modest. You went to Yale drama school, yeah, which yeah. is the fucking, you know, the yeah, be, was, one of the best it, ones it in the world. The hoo-ha. Yeah, yeah. And they uh, didn't teach yeah, anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, you know, and so it was like, so the first thing that I wrote uh, at Chapel Hill was a play, and I, I got all of these actors together who were all getting you know fucked over. They weren't doing a show, and yep, they had time, yep. and, um, and I had friends who did film. Got us all together and said, I, I want to write a play, and I, I want it to be about growing up and, uh, in America, and, uh, and it was, uh, and I said, so we'll... We'll, you know, we'll do some scenes and stuff, and I'll bring in a scene, and then we'll work on it. So they improv and wrote this, and da da da. I wrote it, and they, we would do all this, and and uh, and I couldn't get the uh, the theater department, of course, wouldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, I had this uh, fellowship to write there because I was the only one who'd come out of the school with <laughs> yeah, yeah, playwriting yeah. degree. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the so it was the, the first time I had money, really. It was like nice. back then. It was like not a ton, but it was really good. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, be, from being a broke college student to getting a couple was, G's in your bank account? Exactly. No, it was, yeah. it was unbelievable, yeah. especially down there at that time when it was still going to school. Everything was cheap. Yeah. And, uh, and in comparison, by far. And so we ended up, uh, we'd, we, we worked on it. Um, I went to the student union. They, they, I knew the kid there who was in charge. I said, I'm going to do this. I said, I'm not going to borrow a dime until I, we have a show. And I said, and it's not going to be more than a, a grand that we're asking for. And th- they would do student shows, you know, at the theater for five, ten thousand. I'm going to do it for a thousand. And uh, and we need. And then when it if, if it doesn't work out, I'm not going to. We won't do it. So yeah. We, I'm, I'm, I'm writing it. We're getting there, and I'm going. We're going to need the money. We'll do this. And uh, it was a massive hit. It was insane. Damn. It was crazy, Bill. So you're the king of uh, Chapel Hill. I was the king of Chapel (laughs) Hill. I was the king of North Carolina. (laughs) He toured the state. Wow, holy shit. What we did was we got immediately, we we got out of, um, the the show was the the guy um, who wrote for the the paper in Raleigh ended really what was my career at at the school by, by saying, by writing a review. <laughs> by letting said, everyone know you were Jewish? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is all well and good, but he's kind of distributing dangerous ideas to the Christian youth here in North wow. Carolina. <laughs> Here's a side. Here's a uh, That is good. The first girl I went out with there yeah. at Chapel Hill said literally within four minutes... He, you know, I've never dated a Jewish man before. <laughs> and I was like rubbing my hands. Oh, finally. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. good. I, Did I, she I, ask you to do that? She had a thing. She was like, do one of the most Jewish gestures possible. <laughs> <laughs> Rub your hands together. Yeah. Yeah, at least she, she, didn't, she didn't touch my head to see if I had horns. Yeah. <laughs> it was really. But that's exactly. But that is so good. Uh, it was the, the uh, it was uh, we 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 uh, we basically um, I even forgot what I was talking about. The guy ended your career. Oh, the, the, the oh reviewer. yeah, because oh the reviewer. The reviewer said, "God, that was too good." <laughs> Thanks, man. Stop. Uh, that was so the because uh, it was really a chunk of being there was like that. Yeah, I can't even like, imagine well, it, it to go weird. from like 
Silver Spring, which is you know yeah, big yeah, Jewish yeah, yeah, suburb, yeah, exactly. to Baltimore, go f- yeah. to go to North Carolina yeah. at that time, it's like I literally, you know, I was joking, but I was, but part of me is also like that must have been fucking wild. It was wild. It was good, but it and it was and it got really sane quickly because it was the '60s. So yeah. we got over a lot of stuff. Yeah, quickly. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Here, yeah. Oh Christ, we were all on acid. And we're all the same. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so the he uh, the the guy wrote this review in which he said. Uh, this was by far the best production he'd seen on the campus in 15 years. Wow. So he wiped out all of the work wow. that it, the, the drama department had done. Wow. And oh, so they were pissed. So they were pissed. You do this thing for a thousand bucks, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, they're, and he's like, this is better than anything. Yeah, and, they, <laughs> and so, uh, and eventually, uh, it, uh, I, and I wrote it as part of like, uh, I was going for a master's. I didn't take many courses, but uh, so the course that I took in play ready. So I just played huge hit, the... The, uh, we end up, um, we got permission uh, from the school and from the state. The state ended up uh, saying uh, we could tour the show. So we, with that review, we ended up, uh, the, the State Arts Council gave us money and we toured like seven cities. Wow, that's great. It was great. And yeah. that's, so you're on the road, even with, that's interesting. You have the the ability to be on the road and you're Mr. B, you're the fucking director, right? or the playwright. Uh, the playwright. And so you are you just get to go, you don't have to do shit, you wrote it. I wrote you it. You just get to <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you just get everybody giving you accolades. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then afterwards, we would do a and a with the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About what they, and they, it was one of these things, you know, it's the thing is, is with right place, right time. It's all about, it's, you know, the career thing. It's all about timing. You yeah, can, yeah, yeah. You know, if you'd done, you know, the, if you'd done the podcast, you know, six months from now, it would make, it might, you know, yeah. it might have been. I think about that all the time. I mean, yeah. My parents tried to have kids for years. They couldn't. And I think about if I was born when they wanted to have me, I'd be born in one of the worst times for comedy. Po- like, my career would have been <laughs> yeah. like, I came right at the right internet. Like, if my parent, if my, you know, if they didn't need to go get, I'm an in vitro baby. And if they had wow. me, if I'm if I'm born five years earlier, shit is a lot different for me. Yeah. Like a lot, that my whole career is off the internet. The, yeah. From the first yeah. podcast uh, to, you know, the, to the clips, to everything. It's just right place. I think about that constantly. If I'm, yeah. you know, even 40 now, it's a little different for me because I think what I did at first was even, I was a little, you know, it was just like, I just hit right at the right, at the right time. So constantly it's all that. I mean, so much of this is, you got to be talented, but talent is just the floor. It's it's luck. I mean, well, I know all of these guys and, and women that I know that uh, that I think you know should have had breaks. Absolutely. And, and I fell into it because of you know the, the Daily Show because of six four people I knew, and yep, and yep. so I end up on there, and then all of a sudden. Uh, Within three years, David Tell and I are the face of the network. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. It was awesome, um, but it was the that was what did it. And there's other people I know who you know they've got you know the guys like uh, all over the place, women all over. You know they that should have gotten absolutely. And it really is just if they'd been here or here. Yeah. So I mean, but for me that that thing really. Uh, uh, and and what was really and it was really true at the moment in time we. It, we go take the first place we go to. We, so now we leave the campus. Now we're at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. All women's school. Very nice. All women's school. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so uh, we we do it there. There's the places. It's more. It's like twelve hundred people are are watching it. And wow. there's uh, uh, it, it finishes and they all stand. They get a standing ovation. They go completely bullshit. Holy shit! And I turn to my friend. Uh, who was the the uh, the the producer of it? And the and I said, um, it's never going to be better than this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've just peaked. Yeah, absolutely. I well, said, maybe an hour or two after that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think, I think yeah. you know the, them giving you a standing O is one thing, yeah. but just you know. <laughs> but, but it was really. I said, we're um, yeah. This is in this. To, for this to happen again, this doesn't happen again next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it was, and I, and I, that was the moment. It was kind of like when you're in a bad. Now I'm in a great relationship. This is like, let's walk away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we yeah. have this memory <laughs> as opposed before to before I fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or like it's that moment when you're in the bad relationship. Yeah, and yeah, you go, yeah. 
oh, that's a signal. Yeah, that yeah, I should yeah, leave yeah, right yeah. now, and you yeah. don't. And, and you're like, but this is, I can handle this. I can yeah, handle yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's they'll, very interesting. They'll change. Yeah, I wonder if that has anything to do with our psychology, so that we look at things that way. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with you. You yeah. give me some dog shit, I can handle this. Yeah. You know, but it's something good. It's like, no, I will fuck this up. And it yeah. was, and it, and then it became different. Then it was like, because it was everything about it was it was written about growing up and uh, and how do you deal with the fact that we're in the middle of a of, of a school you're in the midst of this school thing and there's a war going on yeah, yeah. and you're gonna and the kid um, decides that he can't be a part of this anymore on any level both school and the mm-hmm. war and he's gonna walk away so the place went you know so in terms of fantasy yeah in yeah, part, yeah. Uh, it was like people went, and, and we were really good at describing what it was like to be born in the suburbs. Sure, I mean, yeah, I had, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was good at it. We had 20 people involved in feeding feeding me information about their right. upbringing. So right. there was always something that was like, oh, that happened? Yeah. You're perfect. Yeah. So it really had, it's, it, it, it had something to it. And so that was, that hooked me for yeah, a long just, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm going to make that happen again. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> nope, that was your most successful play? Was that it? I, uh, I had uh, other plays that, were, that, that did well, but not But that it. was it, yeah. That yeah. was it. I wrote, uh, I've got a one-act play that I think is kind of remarkable whenever it's done. People cool. go uh, a bit apeshit about it because it's called The Deal. It's two guys making a deal. Yeah, and you never know what the deal is. Yeah. Oh and, wow. And that, and and one of them has. I love just talking about this because yeah, it's so yeah, sick. Please. So it's two guys making this deal, and one of them. By the and way, they're, and they're upping each. Everyone is yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Like the guy is the office is in. Uh, there's they're meeting in his. Is so high. There's actually no view, yeah. and birds <laughs> birds suffocate at that height. And the other one has a bunk. It lives in a bunker yeah. that will be shot into space. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, you know. yeah, yeah. Well, prescient. So the space shit. Yeah, all it, these oh, fucking dickheads are trying to go to pre- <laughs> trying to go to space now. Exactly. Yeah. I wrote it. I wrote it forty years ago. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> and everything I wrote kind of happened. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it, it was before food was a big thing. It was yeah. just starting. Yeah. And uh, so the whole the deal basically breaks down to the fact that uh, they uh, they're cutting the deal over. They 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 both love the chef, and yeah. if they can get this chef, they'll make they'll fly to see the chef, and that's where they'll iron out the rest of the deal. Yeah, if yeah, the, yeah. If they and, uh, and the uh, we one of the guys. Uh, the final topper before we get to that was is that one of the guys actually has a gold scrotum, <laughs> which is another one of my favorites. And gold it, member, wow! They, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Mike Myers ripped you off too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, fucking Elon, Ma- Bezos, and Mike Myers just st- stealing space and yeah. gold, gold balls. And once, <laughs> and once when it was done, somebody had figured out. Or this is when you know your deal. This is the difference in theater and what we do. Yeah, somebody figured out. Um, how to so the guy zips his fly down to show him and yeah, the guy's yeah, yeah. looking down and, at it and uh, <laughs> and he did it so that it looks his face is reflected yeah, in gold. Yeah. <laughs> and the that's other, artistry that must feel great to write the, the phrase gold scrotum and, and, then, and have and, some <laughs> figure it out yeah. I need gold nuts and it's not my fucking problem how it happens <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden there's this gold and he and the and the uh, and the next line is as he's looking at it he says hmm Makes my mouth water. <laughs> so it's really, it's just, a, it's a pretty, uh, and it ends with the two of them, and it's only 25 minutes long, but it's yeah. one thing after another, yeah. and uh, and they, they're squeezing each other's nuts, <laughs> screaming, screaming, it's a deal, it's a deal. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful, did that come to you into an acid vision as well? No, it, was like, just, it was yeah. very weird. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the, but I wish yeah. it had. It was yeah. like, it was, it was one of these things as soon as they wanted me to write about money. Yeah. And it yeah. was, uh, uh, and I came up with these veneer and boulard with the yeah. names of the characters. Great I mean, names. I have no idea where any of the characters. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, one of those yeah, things yeah, where people yeah, go, yeah, yeah. I just wrote it. But yeah, that's yeah. what I did. I yeah. mean, it was just kind of like, holy fuck. Because once you kind of nail the, once you nail the conflict, once you nail the plot, I mean, it was yeah. a pretty simple plot. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're cutting yeah, yeah. the deal. Yeah. You know, and uh, 
it can it can come close for a chunk to write itself. Yeah. It, and, uh, no, that's awesome. And then and then when when I was doing like I said my minimal research, you basically just started doing stand up by opening for plays, right? Mm-hmm. You were just kind of the MC for your, the shit you wrote, and yeah. And then by the way, the other thing I, f- I found was one of the, the buildings, uh, one of the places you were performing was it, which is now the Beer Baron Tavern. It was I don't remember what it was called, but they they would do open mics there too to this day now it's called the dc comedy loft oh yeah yeah and it's like from that t- from then to like i was doing open mics there the same same place that you that yeah. at least on wikipedia <laughs> it's that, they, that you were so that's pretty fucking cool that there's been a one uninterrupted place where they've been doing you yeah, know yeah that's comedy the whole i didn't time. know they've still yeah, been yeah, doing yeah. it oh yeah yeah it was uh Right, it was, it was, it's on, um, you know, it's off, it's kind of like DuPont Circle area. That, that Yeah, I don't it was uh, the Brick Skeller. The Brick Skeller. It's, now it's, it's the Beer Baron, it was called, it's the Beer Baron Tavern, and it's now the, wow. now it's the DC Comedy Law. And this, and they give you an idea, I wasn't even doing, I'm, this is how fucking insane I was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't, nobody, nobody was doing stand-up down there. Stand-up had started a bit. Yeah, it started to kick off in New York, and there's improv right, right, in right. Los Angeles, and it, it started to move. It was seventy, eighty, actually, or no, it wasn't even that. It was seventy. I, w- I was doing this. I'd gotten out of college. It was seventy one. Yeah, seventy two. I'd finished this play. I'd come home. Now I'm living there and have a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the at the federal government, <laughs> and there's an audition. <laughs> For the Brick Skeller, they need a comic. And yeah. the comic is going to appear before the music acts, which were basically, this is how old it was, folk singers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I... Uh, and the I Great go, Dames, were they still around? No. God damn it. <laughs> don't think I didn't try to book them. <laughs> no, really, they, they'll do folk. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy them some dulcimers. <laughs> so so they, uh, we ended up... Uh, I ended up going down to this audition, mm-hmm. and I had I had done some stand up at Chapel Hill, and had, uh, and, but I, I really had just kind of gone on stage, and I, I told the stories that I told. So I mean, if you took what I had, which was not refined, yeah, yeah, I had twenty twenty five minutes about sex, right, 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 and they Great wanted stuff. me to do three sets a night, twenty minutes. Oh wow. And so I went in and I did my strong set, yeah, which was my, sh- my, yeah. Sh- my shitty set. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> Little yeah, yeah, did he yeah. know that I had shittier ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, they're like, all right, he's just warming up. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and another guy named Ron Moranian uh, got, and we both got it, and we worked every other week. Cool. And I would just take stuff from the newspaper. I mean, I, I was working around Washington, so I'd do stuff from that. And yeah, da, da, da. yeah. And it was. And I had no clue I mean, yeah. about anything. Of course. And it, and there was nobody around. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 there was yeah, no yeah. open mic yeah, at that point. Yeah. Eventually, when I came out of, when I was at uh, drama school, when I went, in, uh, I would go into D.C. to work at another place where it was kind of an open mic night. Uh, and uh, where a variety of people, you know, from the area worked. And it, it was great. And, yeah. And... Uh, but this was, I was really just going yeah, just in there. just fucking around. Just fucking yeah. around. And that they let me. And you and you had a job at the time. You were, at, yeah. you were working for the government. And your weekends, you're just... Yeah, you know. and I was making, and then I was just shoving the money in the, it was because it was like, was I making like a hundred bucks a night or something doing that? Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. phenomenal. Would Which they still pay, pay, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how fucking, that's how much comedy respects, yeah. <laughs> that's how, how much they respect comedians. Yeah. Pay scale hasn't changed yeah. in fucking 50 years, right fucking cocksuckers. No, at that time, at that time, a hundred was real money, yeah, and, yeah, that, yeah. and it's really that good. It worked then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really true. Uh, it's, it? Yeah. But it was, but I made, you know, so all of a sudden I could bank, mm-hmm. uh, my, you know, plus living at home. So, yeah, uh, it's nice. And it was all basically, I'm, I'm trying to raise as much money so I can continue uh, to deal with my real addiction, which is theater. Yeah. yeah. Is theater. I'm not going to get a fucking dime. Hilarious. That and so stand up so- comedy was what it helped you put away <laughs> yeah. for, for what your, your actual dream. Yeah. Yeah. That's is, how fucked up is yeah. that? No. If you're, if, if you were maybe the, the one kid where, who did have talent, whose parents were like, come on, man, you got to cut some of this shit out. <laughs> like if, if I was, if, if I'm your fucking dad, I'm like, you're doing stand up. 
to pay for writing plays. <laughs> Pick one thing that's not going to work. <laughs> Don't do what you can't do, you know. But good for you, man. That was that's uh, you know, you were you were getting after it. I w- we could talk all day. I would l- I have so many questions I want to ask, but we do we got to use some of your wisdom here for our callers. Oh yeah, so Mr. W- yeah, you learned want, about my learned, wisdom. We've learned we've learned so much about yeah. your wisdom. Oh yeah. Uh we you know, I I have so many more questions, but you know, we got to have you back. We'll get to it, but I think we got to we need your perspective for for some of our friends here. They're sure. they're struggling. So, Eldis, why don't you why don't you hit us with our first question, buddy? And by the way, before we do that, I, I should say let's plug some of your stuff. Special on YouTube right now. It's got a million views. Very funny. Go watch it. Free special mm. from Lewis. A podcast. Yeah. Anything you want to. Tragically, I need you. Tragically, I need you. Is on is and it's free. It's free. Fucking, it's great free. special. Um, and then uh, I'll be back on tour in the states starting September twenty first. You I go love to it. Lewisblack.com and uh, and the, I'll be in uh, you know I'll be in Spokane, Washington on the, like the twenty third, and then love down it. to Ketchum, Idaho, and. All the hot spots. Yeah. I'll Catch. be coming through Rapid City. I know that many of you have pined to see South Dakota. Yeah, if you want to take a break from prospecting and go, and go, and go see Lewis. If the mines are hitting. And so I'll be doing that, and I'm going to be uh, actually at the end of this week, and I've not figured out how to sell a ticket there, is, which is weird because I played there, played, I'm playing Dublin. Dublin, uh, okay, yeah, hell Ireland. yeah. And I, I probably do just as well selling tickets with Dublin, Ohio. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at, at their fish market. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the freshest stuff. Yeah, it's, but they, uh, yeah, right from, right from, the, right from the, the river, the Cuyahoga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, uh, so I, I'm playing in Dublin, and I played there like five. I played the Kilkenny as a comedy festival. I played there Love five that. times. I played Dublin twice. Can't sell it. To, can't seem to you sell hear that. Go buy a ticket, you Mick bastards! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't embarrass us here. Uh, all we'll right. See, yeah. if, if this if uh, if that turns into uh, ticket sales, I will. <laughs> I'll be back next week. <laughs> you heard it, motherfuckers. <laughs> buy some fucking tickets. Wow, Lewis. I bet you wish you had one of these when you were going to drama school in North Carolina. That's right, a freeze pipe, Lewis. Quiet, let me tell the people about it. Freeze pipe, folks, you've probably seen us already. We've used the product on this show. Uh, remember how you used to put ice cubes in your bongs, in your pipes, whatever? Not necessary anymore. They got this beautiful scientific shit that don't freeze. Put it in your freezer, smoke comes out nice, crisp, cool. This delicious little thing right here, the martini bubbler, the gentleman's piece, we're going to enjoy it very soon. And I want you to be like me and Eldis, to have smooth, ice-cold, delicious weed smoke in your lungs. And you can only do that with our friends at Freeze Pipe. So say goodbye to Harsh Smoke Forever and shop the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more at thefreezepipe.com and use code STAVI for 10% off your entire order. I'm recommending these to friends all over the place. All right? We had... Who... who who smoked that? Oh, our friend Austin, of course. Austin Show, the Twitch streamer extraordinaire. He had this in his... He, It's good enough for that uppity gay guy. It's good enough for you. So go to thefreezepipe.com and use code STAVI for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com and code STAVI for 10% off. Order today and start fighting fire with ice, friends. Ah, uh, delicious. <clears throat> One day I'll learn how to say, can I smoke your bong in Spanish? And you know how I'll do that? With our friends over at Babbel. That's right. I love Babbel. I'm trying to marry an ethnic wife. Okay, everybody in my family's white. We got to get a little something going in the gene pool. That's what I'm, I, you know, we got we to get everybody, cultures intermixing, different people, different experiences, going to different countries, traveling. Maybe you want to talk to your you know, maybe maybe you've forgotten your family's roots. You want to reconnect to them. Whatever it is, whether your your goals to learn a new language or my, they're sexual in nature or whether you uh, just want to reconnect with your family or maybe you just want to be a better tourist. You don't want to be, you know, a dumb American uh, when you visit Germany or whatever. Well, whatever, you, whatever your goal is, use Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L. It's incredible. The best way to learn a language, obviously, is to just move somewhere 
and get immersed in it, right? You're not going to do that. You're not going to up and leave. So the second best way to do it is just every day practicing, and that's what Babbel affords you. Really, really fun lessons, very easy to sneak into your uh, everyday routine. I do them every morning. I visualize, you know, waking up my beautiful voluptuous wife of some other ethnicity. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Different culture. And we're speaking. I have uh, Stavrotito is in my lap. You know, and I'm just bouncing him and we're, we're eating, I don't know, paella or burritos. It doesn't, some Spanish speak, I, it just doesn't have to, I just don't want, I want them speaking Spanish. It feels like it's, uh, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the language that's going to take, or Chinese, I guess. Spanish or Chinese, English is over, right? We're done. We had our, we had our reign. It's going, pick a side, I'm picking Spanish. Now, whatever language you want to choose, whatever you want to bet on, go to Babbel, I'm having a great time with it. I'm keeping up with it. And so I want you to do that with it, to, to join me in this beautiful journey of learning a new language. And what you, here's what you're going to do. This is a very special, very limited time deal for our listeners. To get you started right now, you can get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners. That's right. Only for you lucky little devils. It's from Stavi's world. Go to babbel.com slash Stavi, B-A-B-B-E-L. Not BBL.com, although that sounds like it's probably a pretty cool website, too. Go to Babbel.com, B-A-B-B-L. Get 55% off right now. Babbel.com slash Stavi. Rules and restrictions may apply. Oh, man. All those ad reads are making me hungry. Good thing in my fridge right now, I have some of the most delicious pre-made meals ready to go, waiting for me the second we're done with these ad reads. Um, Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. It can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. You guys know me. I'm a bit of a glutton, right? I have a very hard time. Eating is a big problem for me. Since we've joined, we just started with Factor. I'm very excited to be partnering with them. They saved me from a midday Chinese food order. I'll tell you that much. I woke up today, I was dreaming of shrimp fried rice, but I had a, I had a fridge full of factor meals, and I'm like, damn, I'd be a real, real piece of I'd maybe, maybe bleep out, <laughs> I don't know, but I'd be a real head. that's not any better. I'd be a real, a real dummy to waste these chef-prepared delicious meals. I tried them, I had pork ragu with fusilli, incredible. And especially po pasta is hard to get right with chef, but with pre-cooked stuff, it's all about the texture. This thing was out of control. They sneak some vegetables in there. Even my even my bitch ass enjoyed them. Snuck a little carrot in there. Snuck a little green bean. <laughs> Tasted delicious. I loved it. They have all different types. They have protein uh, specific meals. Any kind of like dietary restriction. They if you want to go specific calorie smart, they got you there. Incredible stuff. Every meal I've had has been delicious so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to using Factor. You know, we're trying. We 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 like to get sponsors here that we really use. You know what I'm saying? We're smoking weed out here, and now <laughs> we're trying to bag Latina baddies. And I'm trying to be less fat. <laughs> and thank you, Allah, for blessing us with Factor meals. It's gonna be they they everything I've had so far is incredible. Try them out. Don't take my and look. I've had. I, if I think they're tasty, it's one thing to say they're healthy, and they are, right? That pork ragu had 500 calories, tons of protein. It's one thing for me to say they're, ta you know, for me to say they're healthy and they're, you know, I eat them because they're good for me. They're, they're just fucking delicious. I'll be honest with you. So, join me in the Factor Meal journey. Head to factormeals.com slash stavi50 and use code stavi50. Get 50% off. 50% off. Half off your meals. That's a wild deal. You know what I'm saying? So go right now, factormeals.com slash Stavi. Get 50% off. Do it. Get the pork ragu. I highly recommend it. Uh, all right, great. So go to lewisblack.com. Check out yep. the special. Check Thank out you. the podcast. Uh, one of the best. And why don't we, let's get it, Let's get some yeah. fucking questions here. I'll just play us our first question. What's up, Stav? What's up, Eldis? What's up, guest? I uh, love the podcast. I'll keep it short and sweet. I've got a roommate. Um, who's got a slight gambling addiction, and I want to know if you guys have any advice on dealing with somebody who uh, 
You're kind of worried if they can pay the rent every month. Um, not that great a guy all around. Um, you know, kisses in the sink, admittedly. Um, and other just relatively douchebag things. Um, kind of a dirty dude in general. Um, but, yeah, as far as the, the gambling and the potentially not having the rent, um, how would you guys That's go about living wild. with somebody like that? And if you have any tips for me or for him, um, thanks a lot, guys. Love the content. Peace. Mm. Gambling addict, piece of shit roommate <laughs> who pisses in the... First of all, pisses in the sink, who amongst us? <laughs> okay, let he who has not pissed in the sink cast the first stone. <laughs> all right, so don't get off your high horse, pal. We've all... God, didn't want to wait for the bathroom, especially if you're in one of these early 20s guy... Uh, where there's only one bathroom, probably yeah. you're pissing in this. So let's, but we'll, you know, we'll strike that from the record. <laughs> it sounds like he just hates his roommate. It sounds like gambling isn't really. It hasn't yeah. been a problem yet, right? No, the gambling is really a, a red herring. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This <laughs> guy's just a bullshit. piece of shit. Yeah, and the thing that you do, which is really simple, move. <laughs> this is, there's nothing difficult about this. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. What do I do to to continue to live with him? It's 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 not. A, you're, this isn't a marriage. Fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not even a guy that blows you every once in a while. <laughs> He's just a fucking guy you don't like. Yeah. That that gambles too much. And yeah. by the way, gambling has gotten out of control recently. It's so it's so easy to. It's like every app. It's like every sports thing. It's like there was. It was a more honorable thing when the mafia ran it. Like, I don't like now that it's like banks get all the money. It's like, you used to real... Gambling, there was a actual undercurrent where you might actually get hurt if you fuck up too much. And yeah. I respected that a lot more than this guy who's just like, you might just fuck over your timid roommate who can't tell you to stop pissing in the sink. Yeah. Who's like, hey, can you clean up your bottles of Gatorade piss? Uh, what, I, what I love about when they brought in gambling too, which was just... It just shows how sick we are as a nation. So we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. People are locked up. Yeah, 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 we've been yeah, yeah. five months into it. There's nothing you can fucking do unless you're one of those idiots who says, oh, it's, it's not going to, I'm not going to die from it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. who wanders around. Uh, and uh, and you, so they, they immediately started with, that's when it started. Yeah. Van duel and this yep, and yep. the football game. And, oh, oh, and you, can get a, you can get a bet down. What the fuck? It's like uh, I got. Oh yeah, God damn. Bet your unemployment money on Korean soccer. <laughs> yeah, because they're the only ones who locked down. It was crazy <laughs> what people were betting on because there were just there was like rugby was yeah. was going on. There was like New Zealand. You could bet on New Zealand yeah, rugby yeah. games. You could bet on like Japanese baseball because yeah. they went yeah, the oh, lockdown yeah, that, so yeah, early. And Korean baseball. Yeah, yeah. Japanese it's, and Korean baseball. And so you could do you could bet on that. People were betting on fucking. The wildest shit. It yeah, was crazy. and it was just during, and then, it, and then, it, and then, once we opened up, it began, and then, oh, here's a good idea. Why doesn't the National Football League, you know, own part of the gambling? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to really work out. <laughs> that is going to end badly. They keep suspending, but players keep gambling. Yeah, and <laughs> they keep getting suspended, and I feel bad for these guys because it's like, well, I know you pro you shouldn't gamble if you play the sport. Because it's, it's a big slippery slope thing. But these are guys who are not, they're not betting on their teams. They're not betting on the outcomes. And it's like, you've created this culture of everyone gambles. And now these guys are just getting fucked. But what, you know, what else is new? Uh, that's, uh, so, but, but for you, are you, for you, my friend, yes. Just, why do you have to fucking, are, are we missing something? Why do you have to fucking be there? Move. This guy sucks dick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't live with a compulsive gambler, yeah. and you're good. To, and maybe somebody who cleans up after himself a little bit. But this is this is like early twenties, not understanding that a better life is possible. Yeah, exactly. we've all been there. When it's like you have, you kind of you look yeah. around, you're like, wait, why the fuck am I even here? Yeah. And we got news for you, buddy. You don't have to be here. So yeah, and if we're missing something, don't write us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> Get another one going, Elvis. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, pal. All right. Oh, good. Here's another Elvis, one. My <laughs> Who guy, are these people? This is a child support question. Uh -oh. I hope that helps you file it. Here we go. Oh, oh no. This is, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> Stubby. Thank you for taking my call. Uh-huh. Love you, guests. I have a child support question to ask. Uh, I am a single father in a very red state, meaning 
is very rare. And my baby mama was court ordered to pay child support. Here's the fun fact. Her and I get along really well. We're very good co-parents. Okay. Years later, after the divorce, our son is healthy, happy, you know, has a good, has a good relationship with both of us. She has not paid child support in mm. almost five years. Oh, what the fuck? And we're starting to get close to that $10,000 mark where they start putting motherfuckers in jail. <laughs> what do I do, dude? The whole entire point of putting her on child support was to get her to help out with the kid. Okay. She really hasn't. I pay for most of it. However, she's good mom. Okay. Once a month when it comes time. And then, you know, during the summer when it's critical when he needs his mom. She's always there. She answers my phone calls. Does FaceTime with kid. We're oh, friends. I've had it with these pregnant pauses. At this point. Yeah. However, <laughs> there is that aching question in the oh back of my, my head. God. What would she do if if this was reversed? Well, I don't know oh, if that's man. the question. It's a tough one. It's not, it's not reversed. Love you, it's buddy. happening Thanks. to you. You're getting finessed by this woman. <laughs> the thing is, she's done it for five years. Now you're fucking, now you give a fuck? Why Why did you start caring when you're like, uh-oh, it's getting close to when I can send her to jail? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is bizarre. You never brought this up? You're like, hey, can I have some, have you ever asked her for child support once? What has she said? Has she just not paid you and you haven't done shit? Then you're kind of a dickhead. <laughs> you're, you're, you're allowing yourself to get... You know, was it? Was there ever a conversation? Was there ever like, hey, I'm having a tough time this month. Like, can we wait? But I don't get it. If you've never asked and you have a good relationship, you're kind of complicit here. I hate to say it. Um, I don't know. This is bizarre. This is really bizarre. And then uh, she, I, I'm just wondering. Did, so the, the now, I, I, you know. The backstory I'd like to know. You know I know. So how does yeah, she end yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. With the kid. And how good a mom she, is she if you have custody every have time custody, but once a month, and, <laughs> and, and she can't come up with you know, and she, a thousand it's, bucks a it's, month, and it's five years, so it's two thousand dollars a year. That's not that much money, man. <laughs> no, it's, it's, that is not. It's, that it's less what you, they, you would pay to. Uh, to keep one of those dogs alive. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Two, five, you're right. Let's do the math. Ten, th two thousand a year. That's that's what two hundred. That's like a hundred eighty dollars a month, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like every streaming service. Does <laughs> this bitch have Paramount Plus? <laughs> if she if she has the little bootleg ones too. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. This so okay, this is insane, but also. You're kind of weird for waiting until it's the jail mark. It's kind of another read on this situation is you let this slide because, by the way, it's not that much money. And you let this slide until you have jail hanging over your ex-wife's head. <laughs> now, if you're evil, that's kind of genius because yeah. now you got her by the balls. Now, anytime she does something you don't like, you're like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I should call the sheriff. Let him know. Let him know what the fuck's going on. But it's also strange to be like, what if the situation was reversed? I don't know. It sounds like she probably would have asked you for the money because she's... Are you afraid of confrontation? Like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. You're, and, you're kind of... Uh, you're kind of... Uh, now, he said he's in a red state, so he could live somewhere where that is weirdly a lot of money. This motherfucker could live in Mississippi or some shit, and $10,000, you know, that gets yeah. you... A, uh, you could live on an uh, ex-plantation with another, that money. So I'm just going to... It was a... a, a you know, as a friend of Stavros is going to point out, when you send in these fucking things, <laughs> yeah. explain some of this shit. Because yeah. okay? you're leaving part of the story. This is two emails yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Or the two, two questions sent in, and both of them leaving out chunks. I'm a single father. Uh, I have a child support question to ask. I am a single father in a very red state meaning. 
It's rare. He just wants to pat himself on the back a little bit for being a single dad, which, you well, know, wait, good for did, you. What did the baby mama do that he ended up with the baby? Yeah, I know. We would like to know more about yeah. her. And did, yeah. And she can't come up with 180 for you, dude. Yeah. For, for Not for you, for your kid. Well, but yeah, I don't know. At this point. You have too much empathy. That much, I'll tell you. But it's also too late in the game. It's kind of strange to be like five years later, be like, hey, where the fuck's my $10,000? Yeah. She's like, what? I mean, you're getting, here's the thing. You are getting got by this woman. I'm. My guess is this was what your relationship was like. This yeah. is a vestigial thing. Now, it's not as bad as, you know, sucking some guy off in your in your shared Nissan Rogue while you're away. You know what I mean? Wow. She, like, it's not, it's, wow. not, it's not that bad. Wow. But, <laughs> but, Nissan Rogue? <laughs> yeah. But she is, she is getting one over on you. And my yeah. guess is that's what your relationship was like. She was kind of, <laughs> my guess is she was, you know, I'm just going to, here, here's, here's me with the limited information I have. Really good at giving top, you know what I mean? Like she's a kind of insane. She's crazy, or else she'd have her child, right? Mm -hmm. Means the pussy was probably pretty good, and you're still kind of scared, even though you don't get the fucker anymore. Or maybe she throws you, she throws you a little pussy every once in a blue moon to get you off her back, and now it's been eight weeks since you've busted, and all of a sudden you're you're you got the abacus out, and you're counting how much fucking child support she owes you. I got a feeling something like that is happening here. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> so, wow, it, your answer is impressive. <laughs> you. You, you have a whole other life going yeah, on. Yeah. You, could, you could drop this stand-up bullshit. Thank you, Lucas. There's Luz, a million yes. bucks in this. Yeah, yeah, Much yeah. more. The just advice, just so that somebody, they love listening yeah. to advice. They love listening to advice, and I feel like I have a handle on the situation. You do. Just from his, also his voice is a little timid. And the, anyone who, I hate that this is kind of, now we're getting a little too caveman brain, but it's like, single father. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like anyone who gets stuck with the kid for every time but a month. <laughs> she kind of got one. Oh, you have flipped here where she is basically the deadbeat dad. And you're the woman, you're the like wife with too much empathy for her piece of yeah. shit. Like husband, yeah. your ex-husband. That's all there is to it. And she's finessed you. She's gotten one over on you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can come up if you must. If you if it's now you've decided it's time to take a stand, don't put your fucking kid's mom in jail. That's only going to fuck shit up more. You're going to seem vindictive. And if you must do anything here, have a conversation with her and be like, hey, I could you could like you. Owe, this is how much you owe. I don't want to make this something crazy, but can you start chipping in for something? Right. Because uh, but you're also a little complicit here. So you got to start slow and you don't want to be a hard ass all of a sudden because A, she'll flip it on you. You don't have the guts to go. <laughs> you don't have the guts to play hardball. I can tell. Yeah. She will do something and you will end up looking like a fucking asshole. Yep. I promise you that. I promise you that. So just see if she'll kick in for a fucking, you know, juice box every once in a while, whatever. See if you can kind of get her ledger lower over time. But you're a little complicit here. And if I'm wrong... You know, feel free to update us, but I think I nailed you personally. Wow. Uh, so you, you're really good. <laughs> Thank you, my and friend. And also, you know, that's if uh, if you just need somebody to to call in once in a while and talk to the kid, um, yeah. and, and, who, and we don't need to pay you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Call in. Yeah. On the live show, let me let me let me help your kid with his algebra homework. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll just play us another one, buddy. Hey, Stav, I got an interesting one for you. Okay. Um, I'm also the older brother of two younger brothers that are twins. Nice. Um, I'm 28. They're both 25. Um, they're still, I don't know if your brothers went through this, but they're still in this awkward um, twin phase and the fact that they were so close together with each other that they never really learned how to branch out and hmm. make friends even through uh, high school. Uh, unfortunately, when they were in college, they ended up going to the same college together, which was good. It lined up their anxiety, but it didn't let them become their own person, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with that, COVID hit. So uh, in terms of socializing, that kind of diminished pretty quickly. Damn. Um, I would go over to the house and try to give them, like, social homework because they were, they were always good when it comes, came to academics. Mm. Um, 
I'm just looking for some help. I don't know if your brothers went through this or if they were just as sociable as you right away. Um, I'd really appreciate your help. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, I mean, my brother. So I have twin brothers. My my younger brothers are two years younger than me, and they're they're twins, but they're fraternal twins. So they're not. I don't know. This sounds maybe they're identical. It does. This happens. Identical twins. It's almost like sometimes identical twins can come off as homeschooled, even if they went to public school. You know what I mean? Like they just feel Amish, even though you know, no matter wow. no matter who the fuck they are, you wow. know, where they have this weird inner language yeah. and they yeah. don't really break out. That can happen sometimes, um, uh, especially if these guys and these guys are kind of getting my my brothers were not like that. We're, they were fraternal, so they're. They basically were just happened to be born at the same time. They're not. They don't have any of that twin shit going yeah. on. And me and my brothers all just kind of we took turns. Two of us would be friends, and we'd gang up on the other one. It was <laughs> it was just continuously changing like power dynamics in the house. Um, and then when one, they were younger, they're younger. Uh-huh. One of my brothers went to college, uh, you know, and then my other brother stayed uh, in Greek Town and uh, kind of just fucking. In fact, we're gonna have him on. I think we're going to go deep into the Greek town chronicles, but my one brother went to college, was playing sports, you know, just, he went to like a party school, wasn't a big partier, but was always, he had his own thing, he was very sociable, my other brother just was getting fucked up in Greek town <laughs> for, for a couple of years, that was his, he went to the University of Eastern Avenue, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just doing, just drinking 40s and shit, and, and drinking sprayed, sprayed with raid weed, uh, <laughs> so they had their own, their own very rich interior worlds uh uh but this can be a problem when you know if you have siblings that are way too close it can be tough i don't know and they're they're 25 now that's you might just have to you might just have to say they're who they are a little bit they and they sound like they might be nerds anyway right like they just care about academics um they're in college they end up going to the same college and then COVID, so they don't get to socialize, and now they're just kind of stuck on academics. Hey, look, man, not everybody's going to be a cool guy that gets fucked up and, you know, <laughs> fingers girls, you know? Wow. So some guys have to... I'm we need serious. actuaries. <laughs> we, need guys, we, need guys, wow. we need guys working insurance. A cool, a cool guy with fingers. <laughs> I have never heard that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but this can happen where it's like you know one if if you're you know you, you just your your siblings don't go the way you want yeah. them to go and it's it can be usually like this here's the thing let's put this in context some people's younger brothers are addicted to opiates you know what I mean some people some you know what I mean like yeah. some people are doing bad shit your brothers are just nerds. And that's that might just be who they are, and and I think instead of trying to mold them in his image, right? Maybe you can make them cooler nerds. You know what I mean? Like a, a, like uh, a moderate. What am I looking for? Your expectations. Mod, moderate. What am I looking for? Your expectations. What's the phrase I can't come up with? Because I'm fucking stupid. Uh-huh. Anyway, just lower your expectations. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of the word either. Yeah, yeah. As soon as manage, you go, think of. Manage. Uh, who gives a fuck? There's one word that's going to hit me, and it's not even that impressive. That's the most annoying thing. Yeah. When this happens to me, it's always like a word everyone should know. Yeah. It's never, it never makes any sense. Anyway, so look. Maybe these guys are not going to be, these guys aren't going to be, you know, cool like you. But see if you, you, you're trying to give them social homework, he says. I'd love to see what that, yeah, what, what is social that? homework is. It's like Pick a, up the phone? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're going to dial? Make eye contact with yeah. a woman for four seconds at a time. Yeah. They're doing like, yeah, they're doing like a Water reps. Order a pizza and yeah. pretend that people are coming over? Yeah, 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 yeah. Open the door. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. A couple couple reps of eye contact with a, with a sick. You work your way up to being able to look a nine in the eyes. Get a bunch of dumpy bitches and make your brothers talk to them first. <laughs> work their way up. But you know what? I say that as a joke, but not, not a bad idea. Because I don't know if this was your... Well, you were a theater kid a little bit, but it wasn't... I think it was before the whole theater kid phenomenon happened. Oh, yeah. Where it kind of became its own thing, yeah. where there was a lot of theater kids who were not popular, but in their own worlds... 
Yeah. They were all they were all fucking and having parties yeah. within their own ecosystem. Yeah. Even but, you yeah. know. But not in my No, 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 no. no. Yeah, <laughs> even I wasn't even in the world and I knew that even entering the world would <laughs> yeah, yeah, none of that was be no different than my own world. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so the, the best you can hope for, I think, is your twin brothers becoming cool within their little nerd world. Like, get them, what are their interests? Stop trying to kind of push them into, you know, uh, getting them out and getting fucked up and doing all this stuff. And, you know, maybe these guys are, maybe they're going to get pussy at like a board game convention or some shit like that. Maybe it's going to be uh, Settlers of Catan. That's going to that's going to be how they find girlfriends. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not going to be at a bar. So just see who these guys are and kind of be, you know, understand what you're working with. That would be my advice to you as the older brother. You can't push your bro. I, and I kind of went up against this sometimes with my brothers. Now we have a good relationship. We've worked on a lot of stuff, but meet them for who they are. You know, it doesn't sound like you guys are the same type of guy. See if you can help them along in their world as opposed to trying to bring them into your world and trying to bring them into your expectations. Um, so, you know, that's all I can tell you, my friend. I've uh, got a better advice. Okay, here we go. No, I mean, it's the, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's totally off of what you've asked <laughs> yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it would be uh, stop pushing to you socialize them. Mm -hmm. And if they're good academically... Push them to find some sort of a, of work that makes a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Focus, get them focused. That's true. If they're not going to focus on socializing, get them to focus on the fucking job that's in front of them <laughs> yep. that they can get really good at. Yep. Get them a master's. See if they're willing to get a doctorate. <laughs> right. See, you know, fucking pharmaceutical companies are always looking exactly. for a new drug. Get them on track and take 10%. Yeah. Become their agent. <laughs> their agent, yeah. And, and forget the rest of it. I love that. Yeah, these are guys that are going to peak with their second wife, yes. not their first. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's well, how you got to look at your brother. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Get them someone to hold them down through the doctor, you know, through yeah. their doctorate. And then, you know what I mean, right around 52, yeah. 53, a nice hostess, they meet, you know, whatever, uh, you're good to go. Like the, like who, the, um, uh, the owner of the, of the Golden State Warriors is now married to a woman who was like, you know, uh, at a, worked at a golf course during, he met at like a celebrity golf game. No. And you're not going to guess this. She is a lot hotter than his first wife <laughs> and much younger than him. So that's the path your brothers are on and don't yeah. fight it. You're going to peak now. They're going to peak at 55. Boy, that was good. Yeah, I think we really got it by I the end of that. I think you got yeah. it. That's really, I mean, it's impressive. <laughs> oh, so you're, I'm blushing over here. <laughs> it is. You, you would have had to pay a lot more fucking money for that <laughs> than you did for what he just told you. All we ask is that you uh, watch Lewis's special on YouTube, folks, and, yeah. you know, maybe subscribe to the Patreon <laughs> of Stavi's World if you're feeling generous. Um, um, all right, hit us with one big LD. Hey, Stoppy Baby. Big fan. Thank you for all you do. And thank you to the guest, whoever is answering this mm -hmm. question. I know you're phenomenal. She's right about However, that. However, right now, I'm dealing with an issue. I've been in a relationship for oh, six years. Um, he doesn't want to fuck me. He Whoa. doesn't want to talk to me. But I guess mm. we're supposed to get married and have kids. <laughs> But he refuses to talk to me about anything. We're what? in relationship counseling. While in counseling, he acts like he's open to things. Mm. And then once it ends, it's just all out the window and completely meaningless. Um, I'm not really sure what to do. I guess, I don't know, six years, is he interested in me or not? Should I just leave? I, I don't know, Stabby. What do I do? Blonde hair, medium tits. Nice. Not huge like you like, but, you know, <laughs> I'm open medium. to all titties. Wow. Anyways, thanks for listening to my call. Um, what do I do when my boyfriend doesn't want to be around me? <laughs> Thank you. Just answered your own fucking <laughs> question. <laughs> Wow. I know. This one's like, come on. Respect yourself, baby girl. He doesn't want to fuck you or talk to you, but you're going to get married to this fucking guy? Six years. And look, I, that's the tough thing. But it's sunk cost, right? It's like, 
that shit's over. You can't. Everyone thinks like, well, it's been six years. I don't want to waste those. Those six years are gone. Yeah. Whether you're single now or you're in a loveless marriage, yeah. you're not getting those six years back. It's about the next five, ten, whatever rest of your life. And before we finish giving this woman uh, advice, I want to go on the record here. Yes, of course, I love huge titties, right? I want to go on the record. This is a. Con- <laughs> <laughs> There's <laughs> something more occurring here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's important I set the record straight. Of course, I love huge titties, but if you're a titty connoisseur, you appreciate titties of all shapes and sizes. So if you've been thinking about sending me pictures of your breasts and you're not doing it because your titties aren't big enough, you couldn't be more wrong. And I just want, and that's not to our caller. This is just a general statement I'd like out there in the universe. I appreciate all titties. There's, I'm just a big fan of tits. What can I say? Now, thank you, Eldis. Give, let that ride a little longer. I'm a hero, and I'll look at and put your titties in my mouth. Well, pretty positive. You've got a pretty good rate of success. Some of my finest relationships have started with a completely unasked for pictures of breasts in my inbox. Just something to keep in mind. Now, uh, back to our friend here. And I don't, I don't know if you want to go on record of, on your uh, stance guess, on tits. Um, they're all. They're all perfect. good. They're all personal. You got here. One. <laughs> there isn't one woman who doesn't have a perfect breast. There, uh, that's you're, it. Well, they're, you heard it here first, folks. They're like pistachios. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's I'll right. Tell you, and I, I will tell you that uh, that is really. Um, this is really kind of true. I mean, it was the major discovery. Uh, of 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 my life was just that um, it's easier to for people people would rather be the last thing people want to be is single yeah they'd rather they want a good relationship if they don't have a good relationship they want a bad relationship right and finally they want to be single okay <laughs> yeah. and so the reason you don't want to leave the relationship is because it's comfortable with the fact that oh. I don't have to, you know, I've, I've got all this stuff going. What am I going to do? How am I going to fill my yes, time? Yes, uh, If I have to think about the fact that he's not fucking me and talking to me. <laughs> right, right, What right. else am I going to do? Right. You know? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. It gives you something to fixate on, even if it's bad. Yeah. yeah. And and being single is, is way better than being in a bad relationship. And I'm just going to tell you, here's a tip. You're in a fucking awful relationship. Yeah, truly. <laughs> you know? There's not one. I mean, her tone alone. I know. I've never heard anyone yeah. so... De- like, this is one of the most depressed voicemails we've ever gotten. And we've had a lot of people about to kill themselves calling to this podcast. Uh, I mean, I think you're just in a tough space. You're in a horrible relationship. Not want, like, it, not wanting to fuck and not wanting to talk, it's got to be one or the other. Sometimes a bad relationship is like... Oh, we've we've grown, we've completely lost the spark, but we're best friends, and that's a weird thing that you have yeah. to manage. And that, or it's you know we hate each other, but boy oh boy does he knock my pussy out of the park, <laughs> right. right? But you got neither. You're batting O for two. Yeah. This guy fucking sucks. You don't want to be, and he might be a. Here's the other thing. He might just be a coward who doesn't want to be in this relationship either, <coughs> right? Like how many people? Like I know I have plenty of friends, and I've been this guy in the past. Where I don't want to just be like, to be the one breaking up. So I'll just, you know, I'll just fucking be a shitty boyfriend or whatever. Or And that's that's a mark of like, you of, of young male cowardice. Yeah. Where it's like, instead of saying my feelings, it's like, why don't I act like a dickhead and hopefully she'll do the hard emotional work, you know? And that might be a little bit of what's going on here. It's also strange that he will be performative yep. in relationship counseling. Yeah, that that's to weird. Me, that it? to me is like a bit of a weird people pleaser, like teacher's pet nerd kind of fucking vibe where he wants another person to think he's a good boyfriend but doesn't give a fuck how you actually <laughs> feel. Red flags all around. Go get those medium blonde titties sucked by somebody who's happy to have them and who will have a nice conversation with you. Don't worry about those six years. If you yep. can't... if if. Think about how you feel right now. Is this what you want the rest of Do you want... And by the way, it's not going to be as good as this. It's going to get worse over time. <laughs> do you want this or slightly worse for the rest of your life? I don't think so. So I think you know exactly what the fuck to do here. Yeah, and I also think uh, there is nothing in there. If you had said uh, at the end, 
By the way, my boyfriend makes uh, f- f- ten million dollars. <laughs> right, 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 right. There right. was one plus. Right, 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 right. right, right. If you're okay. calling in from yeah. Aruba, yeah. from his beachfront property, <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah. Then, then we'll have a conversation right. about what you're willing to uh, <laughs> sacrifice and and what you're not. But it, my guess is you guys live in a fucking two bedroom max, yeah. and he's got a lot of Funko Pops uh, <laughs> uh, uh, decorating that extra bedroom. <laughs> Wow. Uh, do, you, do you get? Do you guys think it's like worth at least addressing it and um, their counseling one more time? Because it sounds like he does kind of just like go with the flow, blow with the wind, like in a cowardly way. Where mm. and and it, I've I've never done relationship counseling, but even in therapy, like sometimes you just like go with the rhythms of what you feel like you're supposed to say or how you're su- supposed to like process your experience. And maybe he's doing some of that. So I I would say to her too, like. It's also worth, well, A, does she want to be in the relationship? And whether she does or not, like just in the in the session, be like, you know, don't give him a chance to be it now. Just be like very direct with him and the therapist and be like, I want to end this relationship. Do you care about like trying to fix this? Mm-hmm. And don't try, oh, to, that's do, interesting. Don't that's try to do the little like tap dance of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. like, oh, therapy. Let's like uh-huh. work through this. Just be like straight up like, you know, this isn't worth it if you don't care. But, you know, at least... At least give it a go like that in like a session. I I suppose, right? I see what you're saying. Um, And I guess it depends. Like, has this, did something change? It's like, or has this been, is this what it's been like for five years? This is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I tend to agree with Lewis. This This is is really over, but very nice. Yeah, the optimism. On yeah. Your I, yeah. I think this is a wipe. Yeah. I also think if you've said to the, if you've at any point said what you just said to us to the counselor, yeah, 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 and, yeah, and nothing turned around, and, the, and then fuck it, right? Then, yeah, then it's an absolute fuck it. Yeah, and at a certain yeah. point, you just kind of know. I know you're saying all this, and it's kind. It's interesting because having not enough backstory is both. I think at the end of the day. You know everything you need to from certain situations. It's like, we know these couples. We've seen these couples. <laughs> and these couples, it's never going to fucking work. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, you got to get it. I mean, I've known couples that, like I said, they do fuck and they hate each other. Or they don't fuck and they like each other. And both of those are doomed. You're completely doomed. Get the fuck out of here. You, yep. know, I, you know, there's not, yeah, literally unless he was, and he might legitimately, that actually might be the only thing is that he comes from, uh, generational wealth <laughs> because that yeah. makes a lot of sense yeah because that's what love is for these people yeah. is d- no fucking no actual affection yeah. it's just like well i have a hot woman who is my companion and people judge me better for it and uh, and, and they actually want to s- fuck their moms <laughs> they actually want to like literally physically fuck their moms <laughs> who are getting botox you know what i mean who are like getting a teenager skin grafted onto <laughs> well, their face yeah really <laughs> wow this is uh, the other thing is is just how she uh I just that it's it's this is kind of like beyond. I, I can't imagine how she's that that there's been no suspicion of uh, an affair, right? You know right, that right, right. That he, that he's around all the interesting, time and interesting. Not, yeah, yeah. And then you, then you are dealing. I don't even know what that unless. She, Maybe you're living with a cadaver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't quite get a sense of this fucking guy. He's, there's something very off about yeah. him. But yeah, if this is what he settled into, get out of there. Fuck Eldis. He's a fucking yeah. dunce. <laughs> Eldis, the only one in a good relationship of the of us in this room. Right. Right. <laughs> I wonder if that's anything to, yeah, to, yeah. for us to yeah. interrogate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby boy, hit us with another. How long have we been going? I don't want to keep Lewis forever. I, we're, we're at 123 right now. Okay, we'll do a couple more. Get out of yeah. here. How's that sound, my friend? It's perfect. I love I it. Get, I get to go do uh, uh, SpongeBob. Ooh, I'm jealous. Oh, yeah. I'm the, <laughs> oh, voice, yeah, you're, wait. I'm the voice of Santa. Yeah. <laughs> How good is that? That's fucking and awesome. Oddly enough, one of the few things that the SAG strike is not. Oh really? They are literally in a different contract completely. Oh. And have been for years. Oh it, great! Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Voiceover work. There you go. Yeah. All right. But that it's it, it's weird. It, that animation, or the, or at least whatever their deal is, mm-hmm. you know, there's some television animation that's not involved. In yeah, the, there is there is certain strike. things. I mean, even the like like I have a special. Well, 
I, I won't say, but I have a special coming out. I can't announce it yet, but that's a different, uh, uh, it's not SAG technically, you know, it's, oh, yeah, it's no. under a different thing. It's so different, there's certain, yeah, yeah. there's stand up is one of the few things that gets kind of bailed out. So yeah. we're kind of lucky we get to well, work. Well, we didn't unionize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. everyone is such a piece of shit that's out for themselves. Yeah, really. This actually is the one time it helps us. Yeah, really. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, so we're, you're just warming up for Santa. All right, I got you. So th- imagine this next caller sitting on your lap asking, <laughs> asking you this question. <laughs> Yo, Stavi, this one's going to be more concise. Fuck Eldis. Go Ravens, whoa. baby. I can say it. You can't so, say it. I have a friend, a good friend, hometown friend that I've known for most of my life. Um, and our group of friends, you know, we all have girlfriends. People are starting to get married. So the thing is, he just proposed to his longtime girlfriend, and she's fucking, in, like, she's crazy. And she, <laughs> what she does, her thing is she... You know, goes out and does, you know, girls trips or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. whatever she does, not that she does it like all the time, but like whenever she does, she gets drunk. Like without him, she does like crazy shit, like fucking make out with random oh, dudes no. and slash people and shit of that nature. And oh, God. he just proposed for two weeks ago. Oh, and Christ. what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I'm, I need help, <laughs> like yeah. trying to convince. The rest of my like the rest of my friends to kind of like oh, do no. like an intervention <laughs> with me. This sucks. Um, but wow. the thing is, like they like they've been together so long that like they're kind of of the mindset. Like, they're a little bit of the mindset of like they don't know if they want to do it because like they they don't know how he hasn't he doesn't know already. And the biggest obstacle is we don't have like solid undeniable evidence. Mm. We ha- we have like a couple firsthand accounts. <laughs> Jesus and, Christ, but, gotta, like, you're saying this is like, you know, yeah, we, there's been stories yeah. of this for like, you know, the last, you know, tens, nine, eight years. So, 10 years. I'm just trying to ask for advice on like, how do I organize this <laughs> intervention to, for, you know, to fucking tell my, my, one of my best friends that his girlfriend's like a piece of shit hmm. with him. So he actually believes me. Cause I can't just do this on myself. I don't have enough firsthand evidence. I don't have enough hard evidence. I need <laughs> this is so sad. Like, help from them and their, you know, girlfriends and fiancés that have like actually firsthand witnessed this. Oh, they've witnessed. But yeah, mm. brother, fucking go Ravens. Fucking, <laughs> go Ravens. That's right, yeah, bro. Yeah, go so Ra- finally, we can agree on yeah, something. Really. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking brutal. This guy's fucked. Um, I mean, look, there's a couple... We we get some variation of this question quite often. It happens where... Uh, and I'm sure you've gone this, Lewis, where it's like, a friend of yours just ends up with someone you don't like that much. Yeah, usually the first marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. You can't do shit about it. You just yeah. kind of... I mean, it's their fucking decision. There's nothing you can fucking do that will change this person's mind. You are there to support them through whatever... Um, you know, and, and here's here's what like if you really wanted to get crazy, you could hire a private investigator, I suppose, like a a, like a jilted wife in a in a fucking noir movie. You could go into somebody's office and be like, "I think my hey, see, my best friend's dame is sucking off a couple dudes, <laughs> a couple fellas down by the she's jerking the soda jerk." Uh, you could try that, wow. um, but. <laughs> Yeah, he's fucked. And here's the other thing. This is something interesting. What if he's a, he? What if he is a true cuckold? What if this guy is getting off with his girlfriend? Wow. What if he's what they're calling now hot wifing, which is just you're getting cucked, but they have a cute name for it. <laughs> Where it's like your wife Jesus. goes out, your wife goes out and gets fucked. You're not even watching. You just hear about it. Some guys, you know, they get off on that That's certain a thing. thing. That's the thing. Hot wifing, which is just getting cuckolded. Uh, and I'm kind missing of, out. Yeah, <laughs> the whole world going on. Uh, and and you don't you might not get down like that, but who knows, man? Maybe your friend is like, maybe this girl is like, oh, I really don't want to suck cock, but my boyfriend loves it when I blow guys on girls trips. <laughs> There's a whole all even your best friends. You don't know what shit makes them tick. Now, am I going to bet money on that being the case? No, probably not. Uh, but you want to have a fucking intervention and be like, your girlfriend sucks. What do you think happens after that? 
how do you really think that turns out? It's not, I mean, 10% chance he's like, wow, you guys are so right. 90% chance he's like, fuck all you guys. Yep. I, I love my girlfriend. I've never, you know, I'll, you guys, and now, and now you're not invited to the wedding or whatever. But it's, you know, it's just going to happen. You're fucked. Your friend's probably fucked. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and if it's the first relationship, it's really, I mean, if this is the first committed relationship, it's tough then. I mean, because I was in a, I was in a psychotic one. <laughs> yeah. And, and my friends didn't tell me. Yeah, and it was yeah. like, you fucking assholes. Yeah, yeah. You never <laughs> but, got anyone to make an attempt? No. Never? Wow. Well, no, and they should have. Well, and, I've made the attempt and it's blown up in my face. So well, I, it will early I don't. on. But this was like. I mean, you know, they've already watched me go through a number of relationships. Right, so right, 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 right. This was, uh, you know, this at this point, it, I'm, I'm, I have more time with them. I'm not gonna, of course, fuck, you know, uh, and it, I mean, and it was, and it was a shitty relationship. I mean, right. if if he doesn't, where it's the problem is, if he doesn't think it's shitty, then you, you then because you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if yeah, there's yeah, yeah. any inkling he you get a sense from him mm. this is weird right then you can step in and you don't do an intervention that's what you do <laughs> when someone is eating too much pie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't get any ideas eldis i don't want a fucking intervention <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> now do you think there was anything one of your friends could have done though while you were in the midst of that weird fucked up relationship to get you out or do you no, think you were just too just, in just they needed to just say you need to get the fuck out of this but all but yes yeah, say that and then still support you in any way you want yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah. mean i wouldn't uh, and because it, it wouldn't bother me because i had already had said things to them about you know what a why she was a pain in the ass right, and right, it right. was uh, you know obvious that i thought at times she mm, was a pain in the ass mm, so mm, mm. and it wasn't you know, and and it because it affected because we're in theater. So yeah, 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 she, yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. was an actress, so oh, get, you don't say <laughs> the actress yeah. was kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, you, there, I bet there's one out of fifty is not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I always found them. I when uh, the great thing about actresses though is is those like. Gee, you know, if you don't like this personality, another one's coming along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give them the cold shoulder until yeah. they come up with a new type of girl to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, buddy. Sorry, man. I mean, you don't want to have an intervention. That's fucking crazy. Um, and if, I mean, if you re like, do you think you've never brought this up? Like, that's kind of also what's crazy. Yeah, that's This weird. is kind of yeah. like... Yeah. If I had any inkling that my friend was getting cheated on, I'd be like, yo, did you hear what the fuck happened? And then you, you got to bring it up to them. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. And by the way, you're not, you're not going, you know, this isn't a trial. You don't need, you don't, you could, circumstantial evidence, if you, if you trust the people who say it, you don't need a picture of her with her, with a cock in her mouth. <laughs> you can say, yeah. you're fr if somebody's girlfriend was on a girl's trip, saw her flash her tits at a guy, make out with him at a bar, they disappear for seven minutes, come back and her hair's all fucked up. You can do the math about what happened yeah. in between. So if you haven't said anything, that's another fucked up thing where it's like, it's kind of like the, the, the child support guy. Yeah. You're a little complicit of how long this has gone on. You've never said shit about her. Now, if you have and he's blown you off, you already have your answer, buddy. Yeah. All you can do now is be a good friend be there when he gets dev devastatingly cheated on with a child. <laughs> like now, be, yeah, yeah, offer him a place to keep a, get a place with a guest bedroom. Yeah. Cause in 12 years he will have to stay there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when he's, when, and hopefully <laughs> if he has more money, make sure he signs a prenup and nothing, there's oh, yeah. nothing else you can do. That's literally, uh, that's all I can tell you. You just got to be along for the ride. Yep. After a certain point, your friend's fucked. I, I kind of think he, can and should say something because usually when we get a question like this it's just like you could just tell like the girl they're talking about is a dumb bitch but it's not like you know she's actually cheating making out whatever that's what people are saying but that's that's a little different it's from just different being from like, i don't get along with her yeah from which is mostly like what people say you're right annoying yeah. controlling whatever it is so 
I don't think he needs to make it like uh, an intervention and have this guy walk into a room of like 17 of their friends <laughs> right, right, to right, be right, like, right, we right. saw your girl make out a PowerPoint a times <laughs> Vanessa was a cunt. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like got a bunch of slides, you know? You I, th- need that. I think he could try to like maybe talk to some of these girlfriends or fiancés or whatever and be like, look, Rally I'm going to tr- talk to him yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. Will you back me up? I'm getting this information from you. Will you tell him like you saw this if... Yeah. He asked or something. Okay. But you don't even like need like a first hand report or something. Be like, hey, I heard from blah, blah, blah. Your girl's like been making out with people getting blacked out, fucked up, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think he does have some some space here to it's it's not as cut and dry as like you just gotta let your friend find their like find out on the, for their own. That's a good point. And I will say though with the caveat of if this is still going on. If there was, if he's replying, rely, if this guy's whole thing is there was an incident three or four years ago, and maybe they, maybe she did cheat, and guess what, that happens and people get over it, yeah. right? If that, if you're basing all this on one girl's trip where she kind of acted crazy and she maybe even have cheated, and you don't know what else was going on in their relationship at the time, then you kind of have to eat it. But if this is an ongoing pattern of behavior, then I agree with you. You at least, you at least owe it to your friend to. Go on the record and be like, I don't think this is a good idea. I will support you in any way you need. I'm just letting you know this is what, you know, who whoever has seen. And I don't feel comfortable letting you just being fully enthusiastic. Now, if you're telling me it's all figured out, whatever, I'm here. I'm your boy. I'll do whatever you want. But but if it's uh, but but if it just if it's one thing, you kind of have to let it go. But I think you're right. If it's like an ongoing pattern yeah. of cheating every fucking weekend. Yes, you're probably right, Elvis. And, and next time you write this uh, email in or whatever you you talk, I'm, I'm looking at it. As yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not psychotic. It's a transcribed voicemail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not psychotic. <laughs> yeah. um, then I would say that, uh, say that she was making out with the girls. Mm. Well, then, been, then, would, then I'll get married on the spot. Uh, yeah, it would, have been, it, it would have been a better story, yeah, an easier yeah, yeah. story. It would have been a lot less tough yeah, for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we'd would, go, wow, what's yeah. the problem? We wouldn't we feel would sad. Yeah, we'd feel happy for your yeah. friend. And we'd call you a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> Take us home with one final question, Big LD. Hey, Stav, Eldis. Uh, recently, my girlfriend has been talking about us going on vacation, and she wants to plan a destination. I never listen to the podcast with her. I'm her- she doesn't know who either of you all <laughs> are, and she has her heart dead set on, you guessed it, Albania. Get the fuck out of here. Pause this. Now, Let's give Lewis some context. I, <laughs> Eldis is an Albanian. I'm Greek. We've been friends our whole lives. Right. And there is, a, I don't know if you know the geopolitical context here, but Albanians are sort of second to third class citizens in Greece. There's a right? there's a fair amount of ironic wow. racism that kind of really holds our relationship together yeah. since we were kids. We love trashing Albania on this podcast. And uh, Eldis, of course, when I tell him, Take us home. Of course, he has to end the podcast with a voicemail glorifying his piece of shit home country. Go ahead, Eldis. Finish yeah. the go finish wow. the call. Talk to her. I said, you know, Albania is like very poor, right? Like I'm not super sure there's a lot to do there, and she has no background info on it whatsoever. It doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to change her mind, however. So uh, if you guys have any recommendations for things to do in Albania, uh, sounds like I'm going to be there in the next uh, eight or nine months. Thanks. Yeah, I got an idea. Go look at the biggest pile of goat shit in southeastern wow. Europe. Wow. That's right. That's it's actually it also doubles as the capital. <laughs> they've, they've dug. <laughs> that's where the president of Albania holds his meetings. They've ho- they've hollowed out the world's largest <laughs> pile of goat shit, and they have uh, Albanian parliament in there. <laughs> wow. Good God. Uh, uh, yeah, here's here's a fun thing you can do. Uh, go get well water in the morning before it runs out by noon at the villagers' thing because they don't have fucking running water in half wow. the country. <laughs> That's a fun little activity you can do. <laughs> Elders, 
I would say, first of all, forget all the propaganda you've heard about Albania. He says very poor. We're not the richest country. But it's a beautiful country. It's got mountains set right next to the fucking Adriatic. Shut the and fuck up. Look, Albania is, Albania will be a really cheap vacation. That's true. And if you drive along the yeah, coast. Yeah, if you have dinner at 7-Eleven, you're probably going to save a couple bucks. Wow. You're right. <laughs> wow. By the way, thanks, Elders. I'm like, take us home. We have a fucking comedy legend on. What's the last question? Something about fucking Albania, a country he doesn't even give a fuck about whatsoever. I was let let yourself this. talk and end the episode, yeah. you fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Great producing. Yeah, no, it's perfect. <laughs> let's, let's tee up Lewis. Oh, what do we got? A question about fucking Albania. God damn. Well, this I what was going to go there till now. <laughs> this, is, this is a heartbreaker. <laughs> But this is the first fucking question. The only thing in his defense is it's the first fucking question. It's just direct. Yes, yes or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to, I got this thing in my back. Could you look at it? I have two friends. They think it's a mole. I got another friend. I've got a guy who thinks he's a doctor. Yeah. Wow. And then you've got these answers. That's amazing. What's the capital of Albania? T uh, Tirana. No, it's not. Yeah. No, you're both lying. Tirana, Tirana. right? Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a different... Wow. What's the other big city? Is that the only one? Dures is like a big beach town, but it's kind of like a shitty, dirty beach. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, that's the second city he come up wow. with, by the way. We asked wow, him what the second biggest city in Albania is. Like, it's oh, dirty. you know, the shitty, dirty beach town. <laughs> that's number two after but our there capital. Are, there are nice beaches. <laughs> yeah. They're just a lot smaller, yeah. and you got to drive several hours through the mountains to get there. Yeah, don't take your fucking girlfriend to Greece. You know what, man? Whatever. Well, it's been burning. Yeah, it's true. Every year, though, it burns. Go to Oct go September, October. It's cooled down a little bit. Not as yeah. many tourists, but the but the beaches are very nice. The, I mean, the major thing with Albania is is that it's. It, it is cheap as it's a cheap yeah. vacation. Yep, you'll be able to do that vacation and then go to Greece. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, and also, if you, you know, we're not a travel agency. Right, that's true. Okay, I know these guys have an argument about this. But, you know, I've been brought on this show and, for my lucidity, and uh, we're not. We don't do travel. This is something you should do on your own. You think I got pamphlets here? You think that th 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 this is just because this is back here and quite nice? This doesn't mean. Ooh, do you want to travel here? No, it's on a wall. So I would say, uh, if you look it up, there yeah. is, they actually have been pushing it. To be honest, they've been mm. pushing Albania. Oh, I and, I, that. I, and I don't know if it's the coastline. I mean, I certainly didn't remember the capital, but I'd been re reading stuff as like, Interesting. go to Albania. Wow. And I was like, yeah, well, I know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm not sure. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. look at the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. These guys have tough shit to do on a daily basis. <laughs> true. And they never thought... Oh, good. If they wanted to be in trouble, do you know how good they'd be at it? Yeah, Phenomenal. We'd be the best. That's our backup. For, uh, that's, we, that's what we do half the yeah. time. Podcast and travel agency. Yeah. If you want to know about places in the United States, we're willing to talk about it. Albania is a guest. <laughs> You're going this. Eldest is going in a couple of weeks, actually. Yeah. Let's, basically, the short story for this guy is uh, flying to Tirana. Mm -hmm. drive the down. only place you possibly could fly in, by Spend the way. Spend a night there. There is no other airport. But go ahead. There might be another. <laughs> Basically, fly in there, get a rental car, drive down as close to the coast as you can, hit mm -hmm. some small beach towns like Himar, there me, mm -hmm. go around. Then on your way, on your drive back to Tirana, you can go to Girokaster, Berat, some little provincial towns or whatever with old castles and shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Lewis said, use that as a guide and just look this shit up yeah. Yeah. on some travel <laughs> blogs. There is a ton of shit on Albania right now. Yeah. I've seen it on Instagram all the time. It is, yeah. No, there's something on the coast mm, that's supposed to be uh, really, you know, it's like it's like uh, cheap Dubrovnik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, after, and remember, after the cities he just gave you, try to spell those out. Yeah. <laughs> just take your girl to Greece, tell her it's Albania. <laughs> yeah. You'll Everyone will have a better time. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. Well, really great. Again, Aldis, absolute great job <laughs> teeing up Lewis for a big finale yeah. about uh, the country you were born in, you fucking idiot and piece of shit. Uh, but thank you very much, Lewis, for coming oh, on great. the pod. It so was fun. a lot of fun. Come back anytime, anytime you, was, you want. Yeah, no, We're here for you. Yeah, let me know if Absolutely. you're around and, uh, and you're bored. This was just great, and especially dealing with this because I just read what people are complaining about and yeah. comment on it this is spectacular yeah no come back we'll do we'll do even more questions yeah uh, no because this makes me feel better about my own life yeah <laughs> you know? absolutely I get, I get it this absolutely good. Uh, go watch the special go listen to the podcast uh, tragically I need you right now free on YouTube and uh, he's on tour go see Lewis yeah. and come see me I'll be the last leg of the Fat Rascal tour kicks off uh in Ohio this October, then I'm in Baltimore, I'm in Philly, Florida, St. Louis, uh, Milwaukee, Kansas City. We're all over the place. Yeah, and uh, he's and he's uh, and he does a great job. I got to see him finally in the. Uh, thank you. Those you were know, great shows. Those were incredible. Those were really those, fun. That was insane being in front of all those people, huh? Yeah, I mean, these nuts. arena yeah. shows are crazy. Well, yeah, it, it, you start to feel like, oh Jesus, maybe I'm Hitler. <laughs> I know. No, I would in front when I'm doing. Sh I mean, in this, I got. To, I'm starting to get to play theaters, which is incredible. But you're like, oh, I understand why certain comedians think they're the smartest guy in the world. I understand yeah, why yeah. you think you are literally a a, a dictator because yeah. you have. If you have ten thousand people, yeah, it's crazy. Fucking sh cheering your name, it's like, yeah, yeah I'm smart as fuck. Yeah. These people should be listening to me, uh, but. Um, that's good, you know. Come see us. Come see us do our mm. our political speak. Our uh, start our own little dictatorships on the road. Yes. Me and Lewis, uh, and uh, we appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you next time, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.